Welcome to Fulham Fix. I hope you're all well. I hope you're feeling better than my co-host and friend, Felix, who is, uh, you're currently feeling a little bit worse for air, aren't you, buddy? Oh, I thought, yeah, thank you for saying, Ivan. I thought you were going to mention, I hope you're feeling better since Fulham beat Sheffield United, because the last time we spoke, I was in, and Amer- I'd just been in an American bar watching, how much did we get beat by Chelsea? Was it 3-0 in the end at home? No, 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 it was 2. Was it 2-0? It was 2-0, nil, nil, wasn't it? it? They, felt, they weren't that good. It felt like at least 3-0, but it was a bit, um, we were a bit flat, weren't we, after that? But we've won against Sheffield United since, so I thought, thought you were referring to that. But I'm not feeling that good, Ivan, because since my New York trip, I came back and um, uh, not only did I bring lots of baseball shirts home with me, I also brought COVID back with me. So nice. I've, I've been isolating since for the week and quite sad and just sleeping. It's, it's mm. quite a throwback, actually, because obviously it's still part of our lives but you haven't really thought about it and it's a confusion about who are we going to test who's going to isolate you know because I was just I I decided I was going to test because I didn't want my girlfriend or my bandmates or whatever to get it but then the sort of response when I tested and got it was like what are you doing yeah do you know what I mean so it's quite it was quite confusing Um, yeah but yeah so I, without without getting political, you don't actually have to test, do you? That's the thing. You I don't think you know. You don't need life. to. You don't need to. I just, no. but I actually just felt awful, so I felt like I, you know, I just want to know what it is, type thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think it, what the saddest thing for me that the, the takeaway from that is, um, those who listened to the last podcast, um, uh, will know that you were sitting in a in a in a sports bar in America, hoping to be surrounded by all these Fulham uh, players, you exactly. know, like Brian McBride and, you know, all, all of these, you know, wonderful yeah, yeah. names. And, yeah. um, you know, maybe then afterwards you, you, you come home with some new friends, you know, some 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 ex full mm-hmm. America legends. But all you came back with was um, was a virus that people have kind of stopped talking about. Well, thank you for, rubbing, sort of, thank you for rubbing that in. <laughs> um, thank you for putting that so uh, remorsefully. <laughs> you're well it's what but, i do man but i'm um, welcome i'm feeling that punch but it, it actually um, struck me but i'll come back now we're talking about covid but you have such an interesting take on covid because during the period of time when fulham were playing to no one during the mm. actual lockdown you were one of the only people not associated on the playing staff that was actually in grounds i'll be right in saying that I think so. Along there's a, there's a couple of press and people from press allowed, but it was really bizarre. Like looking back now, just just how, yeah. I mean, Sorry, I was, were you announcing the games for to least, no one? Uh, yeah, and I remember I remember as well getting um, the email from Fulham uh, saying that you know they they were looking to restart the Premier League, um, and you know although they were going to go for kind of like a core team. And things had to be done differently. People in separate rooms and buildings, and in my case, an entire stand to myself. Uh, they wanted me back, and I, I remember messaging um, my boss, just saying, "Was I supposed to be on this email chain?" And they were like, "Yep, the players want it. Like the players, you, you know, they, they, you know, we need the the match day experience as close to as it is when there's no fans way. in. Plus, they use your announcements during game." you know to know what's going on as well and i was just like oh my god amazing no and then way. but just looking back now i mean i i sat there like in empty an empty stand and i felt so lucky don't get me wrong because i was watching i was getting to watch football you know and i got to watch uh you know the team that i love even though i was basically by myself but got i tell promoted. you the really interesting juxtaposition there was the time uh you know when we got promoted to uh to the premier league the first time pitch invasion you know people you know i think better nelly threw me up in the air and and you know you're hugging everyone there's tears everywhere yeah uh and then fast forward to two years later and we get promoted again and it's it well it, it i say we're going to wembley is what i mean when i say promoted we've made it to the wembley final and uh yeah and two years later when it's just me and i'm going on the mic to no one we're going to wembley and i was like god yeah this is a bit weird this i was gonna is, say someone had told me i was telling no one it was so bizarre and you know the players were obviously celebrating but you know yeah it was it was I, odd man i was god, gonna say weird, it's quite it? a sort of david lynch film type experience where you're doing the stadium announcing which is for the people in the ground and there's no one in that ground mm. so did you did you get when we scored goals and stuff did you get did you jump up or was it, did it all feel really kind of flat? <laughs> this is, this is the other thing. Yeah. Is when we were 
scoring or like near misses. Yeah. You know how sometimes you just yell, you're in a stadium full of people and you yell something like, oh, but you can do better than that. Or, you know, for, oh, ref, what are you doing? Those little moments, which yeah. normally go totally unnoticed in a in a packed stadium. When it's empty and you shout, they know it's you. Everyone can hear they you. They can yeah. hear you. Yeah. Literally. So I, you having to be so careful. We did celebrate knowing full well that, you know, they would hear us. And, yeah. you know, a few times I would yell, come on, Fulham. And, you know, a few bits like that. But it was it was very, yeah, it was very weird. I, I felt like whatever I said was going to be picked up. Oh, yeah. And they'll know I, as well. They'll go, oh, that's come from over there. Exactly. And it's just me. Because there was that moment, because that swung in my head now, that Lampard and um, Klopp had an altercation, didn't they? That was clear. It was, every, it was word by word picked up, I think, at that time. <laughs> so everything that was getting said was actually audible. That's mate, yeah. so fascinating. Yeah, you had to be. You had to be really. Uh, what a mad, yeah, really, mad really. time in all of our lives. And, I tell you the other life. thing as well that you might have uh, a slight affinity towards with 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 your time um, over in the states, and I, they do do this in baseball. Am I right? When they hit like a a home run, or they get a yeah, when they get a home run, do they play music? Hey, um, mate, there's music going on, on like every four well, the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. So that's not really a thing in football, is it at all? Really, you just don't have it. But they did it for COVID. So any time a goal was scored, we had goal scoring music, which is like really is. Let's be honest, it's an American thing to do, and it's not something yeah. we really do here. Yeah. And so that was quite cool. So we were making sure, firstly, that VAR cleared it because this was around the time VAR had just started, and so they were yeah. checking absolutely everything. So yeah. you couldn't, you know, celebrate in the way that you do now. I would say. Because I think it's a little bit calmer now, yeah, famous yeah. last words. But um, yeah, you'd have to wait. And then when it was like, okay, good to go, you'd hit the, uh, we had Seven Nation Army, I, I believe, would hit, you know, the, Come and, through the tunnel. Uh, and then I would, an- yeah, I would announce it at a certain point in the song. And then that was it. Yeah, it's so, because it's like, it's like some sort of art study. Because they did it once where Bob Dylan <laughs> played in a theatre to one person just to yeah. see how that one person would react and what, what, what the interaction would be in between the song and the applause would the person feel like they needed to applaud the entire duration of the song or would they not applaud at all just to see yeah. what that would do so you kind of had your own version of that in some way yeah like i said man it, it was weird i don't i don't miss it i felt i felt lucky in the fact that i and i think a lot of the fulham staff did too like we got to see those games you know, yeah, of course. When everyone else had to watch from home and and all that sort of stuff, but I'm, I, you know, I, I could have cried the first time we got fans back in. I bet. Like it was beautiful, like it really was. So, um, but what one thing from at home that you wouldn't have known, known because uh, and um, at home they used when they're watching the games they used to feed in obviously like audio like fake crowd no- noise type thing of the games. Yeah. And I remember yeah. always feeling like they've really overestimated the sort of hubbub of the cottage that the atmosphere would provide because the yeah. fake crowd noise made it sound like the cottage was rocking for 90 minutes every week, <laughs> which we know of all the love in the world isn't always necessarily the case. So it, did, it didn't quite have that like sort of lovely stillness that the cottage sometimes has, you know what I mean? No, and, and yeah, people used to say, you know you got the crowd noise pumped in nothing in the stadium like yeah, literally yeah, exactly. like, oh you're just be, in the stadium it's that sound of like like i tell you what really stuck out for me was when you know when a ball is hit and it hits skin so like it slaps you against the thigh or in the face yeah um and you could hear it do you mm. know what i mean like you could you could really hear that oh and it's every moment a crunching tackle you could hear like oh, you know i really wish i'd it was, been able to do that once in a lifetime yeah. thing like i said i feel i feel very uh, i feel very lucky i do do you know what um, i enjoyed but last I'm week glad it's over i enjoyed Say what again? i enjoyed this week because i was I haven't been able to be there i really enjoyed your little 10 minute um interview with tim ream straight after the game that we put yeah, out oh, for yeah. them fixed oh feet. cheers buds we'll it felt like um I mean, firstly, incredible, eh? 300 appearances, you know, he's been here. I mean, I underestimated it at first. I was like, oh man, you've been here like seven, seven years or something. And he was like, no, nine. I was like, nine, you've been here. I mean, he's, he's, he's been doing it for almost the entire time I've been doing it as well. And, yeah. and I think that's why I, I, like, he's one of my favorite players without a doubt. I love him to bits. Uh, and he's, he's always an absolute pleasure to interview. And I think it's because... I've known him as probably as long as he's known me at the yeah. club. It's, 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 it, and, and, and to know that he's done 300 appearances and you think in that time, you know, there's, there's been moments with Tim Ream where people have gone, you know, 
there's no way he's going to be good enough for the Premier League. You know, right. we need to be looking to strengthen and, and et cetera, et cetera. And then man alive, you know, he bosses it again. And to think, to think he's 36 now. Is he 36, I think? Not that any of that matters now, but he's still playing at the top of his oh, game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's probably, uh, maybe better than he's ever been, actually. Yeah, I think so. Because I think a lot of the time with, with, with defending... Obviously, you've got to have the fitness, you've got to have the pace, but you've also got to have a really intelligent head on your shoulders. You've yeah. got to be able to read the game. You've got to be able to look at a striker and, and, and predict what's going to happen. You know, So I think there's, much like goalkeeping, there's a real intelligence to it as well. And I mean, it was an honour to, to just, just, to, just to get 10, 10 minutes with him after I, his 300th appearance. I and, think that's why we brought and, him to him, isn't it? Sorry, but he's because he's always learnt season on season. You always feel like, oh, people would say that about his criticism from outside. Like, oh, he's been found out. And then the thing he's been found out about, he would he would improve the next year massively and it would no longer mm. be a fault in his game. So he's really shown that sort of intelligence of evolution and emotional intelligence yeah. to like persevere. I think, I think that's where he's going to last really, isn't he, in our affections? Because that's quite a I rare th- skill. I think so. And I think I had a chat with him once, um, just a live chat after a game once. It, it might have been one of our big sort of seven nilers in the championship. Um, I mean, we we oh six six nil whatever we won so many, you know, so many times such big numbers and he even said after that I was like you know how's he how are you feeling right now and he said oh, I'm a bit disappointed actually there are a few things I I um you know uh you know a few things I'm disappointed myself on you know I and I was like you, you guys just won seven nil what are you doing what what can you surely be and he was like you know you've always got to be making yeah. sure you did everything right and I'm like wow that. That's got to be one of the reasons why, surely, you know? Totally. Love that guy. And we should get him in for a full, full and fixed interview at some point. But the reason that I um, bring that up, actually, firstly, if you haven't listened to that conversation, go back and listen to it because it's got a real freshness straight after the Sheffield United games. Lovely conversation. You can tell the cameras are off Ivan and uh, Tim are familiar with each other. So it's just a really natural, lovely conversation. But he brings up, or I think Ivan brings it up, it comes up our full-length guest on this episode, Slavisa Jakanovic, one of the all-time great modern Fulham managers. Probably my favourite part of the interview that um, everyone's about to hear is, is is him, you know, you know, ex- you know, him, uh, Slavisa, explaining what an in, in, important player Tim Ream was for that very reason, you know. Right, yeah. And you, you mentioned Slav. What, what are you probably have met Slav a couple of times in the past or you've been in his presence on the touchline and all that kind of thing. I didn't. I didn't know what to expect with Slav because, like we talked about um, last week, he had such an imposing physical presence. Slav, so mm. so he's one of those managers where you could almost see this sort of cartoonish alpha figure, hands on hip, in his suit from the distance, and you just knew from miles away that was Slav, and he had that reputation for being. Uh, a very driven, sort of hard nosed manager, but we actually mm. played really brilliant football quite forward thinking progressive football and is actually in the image in lots of ways of Marco Silva's team now I think what what yeah. the football Fulham are playing at the moment is kind of the end point of where Slav had started really isn't it in this sort of modern period of Fulham Football Club what um what was your experience well, what are your memories of Slav generally uh he was uh he was um Oh, what would my memories be? It sounds like a funny one, but I spoke to him a handful of times, but never in, I don't, I never interviewed him, which is quite weird. I think normally that in some capacity I'll interview, especially as he, he was with us quite a while. But we had a few conversations whilst I was in the dugout, because that's back when I used to sit in the dugout. Yeah. And uh, often it was him asking me a question like, um, you know, what's their number, whatever, or something like that. There was a time where we conceded in like the 94th minute and if we had won we'd have gone top in the championship and yeah we we let the lead go literally 94th minute and he punched the dugout so he punched you like like by the side of my head so I'm, I'm in the little box dugout and he he just sort of went for it um no he wasn't gonna hit me or anything there wasn't even a risk of it yeah, but yeah, i was just yeah, like yeah. i was like okay yeah he's angry as well i mean i was yeah, very yeah. upset as well but like you you felt it in that moment so there was a you know, there was definitely a a kind of... Oh, and the, another one, actually, there was a, another experience where we were doing a friendly and um, I can't remember which team we were playing. It was like one of the Spanish teams or something and it was pre-season at the cottage. And I was about to read 
uh, that there's like three away subs were about to come on for their team and I went to do them and he just came up to me and said, no, 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 don't worry about that. Don't worry about this. Get our, oh, get yeah. our players on. I remember you said this. I was like, this. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no worries. And I just, Brilliant. he just said, you don't need to worry about who's coming on for them. Do us. Let's get them on. Come That's on. so brilliant. And I was like, and, and it's so funny as well because you always saw him as a little bit of a, you know, he was sort of a bit of a hard nut. God, that sounds like I'm back at school saying that. Proper hard nut. But he was until you found out the other side of it and, and from this interview where he's actually really quite funny yeah, and yeah, a yeah. bit of a, a bit of a softy and, and um, you know, he was loved by like every member of staff and yeah, yeah. was super warm and friendly. It's just, I think on match days he meant business, you know, and, and that was my, uh, that's when I used to see him, you know. And I'm glad you brought up being back at school because without further ado, we should zone into the conversation where me and Ivan do conduct the interview with an energy of being school kids who yeah. just ask a question and then sort of brace for impact. So if mm. you imagine while Slab is answering this, um, where, where was he? He was on Zoom. Is Where is he managing? He was, I he was in Portugal, I believe. He was in Portugal, I yeah, believe. right. So yeah. just bear in mind when you hear this conversation, um, with Slav's um, broken English Serbian and then the Zoom and then the fact that he was getting furniture delivered while we conducted this interview, <laughs> every time we ask a question, our faces are like this, sort of like... <laughs> tried yeah. to brace for impact um which is in part just trying to get a communicative energy going and in mm. part um out of sheer respect for the great man slavisha jokanovic welcome to fulham fix it's an absolute pleasure to have you uh join us on the podcast you are you are held in um like not even exaggerating you're held in such high regard and there's so much love for you amongst the fulham fans that we're just so pleased that you agreed to come on and I, yeah, I'm, myself, I'm pretty buzzed. I'm, I'm very excited about um, chatting to you. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. I think um, just just out of curiosity, and I think a lot of Fulham fans want to know, do you still follow Fulham? Of course, welcome to, to call me. And, uh, of course, uh, this is the important part of my, uh, my life. Uh, <laughs> I know we have a big love uh, between uh, between us in our uh, our time uh, was uh, successful or less successful uh, years, but his uh, memory is uh, always uh, always positive. That's amazing, Slab. Slab, it's been interesting because um, obviously under Marco Silva at the moment we're playing a style of football, and everyone's thinking of you actually because the football is quite similar that we're watching. To, to what your team's played. Have you noticed that, that Marco Silva's Fulham team have similar things to your sides? Marco made a fantastic job and he's even in a more complicated uh, level and it's credit for him, credit for the players, for the, for the, for the team, for the, for the staff and for the board of the, of the, of the team. It's uh, really last year was... Uh, Amazing year for uh, for Fulham and all the assists and joining in the in the great uh, performances uh, at the end of the uh, it's Fulham made uh, important evolution and it's in all the all the levels uh, and now it's uh, it's of course uh, comfortable in the in the Premier League of course it's coming a new new season always is uh, is complicated I wish them all the all the best. And at the end, uh, Marco played in the previous clubs uh, great uh, football and he continued as the same with uh, which Fulham too. Yeah. I think let's, uh, if it's all right by you, to go back sort of quite a bit to um, when Fulham first approached you. Firstly, what have you heard from Fulham before we uh, you were approached to, to manage us? <laughs> <laughs> Can you ask me a little bit different? It's of course I was a Chelsea player. I pull up English football. I was previously I I I play against uh, Fulham. I coach against Fulham with uh, with uh, with Watford. Uh, yes, I yeah. know all the potential of the of the club, of the team, of the of the stands uh, in uh, Craven Cottage, and it was uh, for myself. I interpret it like an amazing opportunity for the, for myself. I I take it this <laughs> uh, this opportunity. And, uh, it, and 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 it was uh, was it it was Mr. Khan spoke to you directly to try and 
uh, <coughs> persuade you to come. Do you remember what he said to you at that point? Because I know we were obviously in a position when you took over. Yes. Where we were struggling quite a bit. We were sort of fighting a little bit for our lives and trying to stay at that point in the second tier of, of football. Do you remember what Mr. Khan said to you? Yes. First of all, like always, it's, uh, my agents uh, contact me and... and uh, Explain me exist some interest for the full on side. After that, uh, I have a few conversation with uh, with owner of the of the club. He push hard. Uh, he, I believe, I am not sure, but I believe he is traveling for, to to Canada for talking with the with the Maccabi Maccabi owner uh. too. At the end, uh, uh, after a lot of the conversation was like uh, 30, 40 days. Uh, we have this kind of negotiation at the end. Pull and pay some uh, some money for uh, some some transfer for myself and for uh, for my my staff. Uh, we have opportunity for start working all together. It's it's interesting, Slav, where you took over at Fulham because it, from a fan's perspective, from outside, it had been a really difficult period for the club for a couple of years, where we just you know things were inconsistent and there hadn't been a manager for a long time. What state did you find the club in when you turned up? Did you see the potential in it? Did things seem tricky to begin with? Honestly, I didn't uh, know enough. The, the team, I was six months outside of the, of the, of the England. I was observing the, 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 the games and especially we were observing the, the, the table of the classification. Fulham was in the, in the middle of the table. Eight nine points to to sixth place. Uh, uh, eight, eight times eight nine points to to relegate the zone. I believe I will find it a more easier uh, job. But at the end it was uh, really tough. Six uh, my first six months in the in the Fulham. Yeah, because there was a transfer embargo as well, wasn't there? So you couldn't sign players to begin with. Was there no transfer? Yeah, we have some. Uh, yeah, we cannot for uh, financial fair play for uh, for some reason we cannot uh, sign any player this uh, this uh, winter transfer uh, window was a complicated time <laughs> for uh, for uh, for us. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, in this uh, team uh, exist uh, quality quality players who can. Uh, uh, approaching with uh, with the quality this uh, this uh, this time, of course, like I said before, it will be easy. It was tough, uh, new coach, new style. Uh, yeah, uh, it will be easy for the players. It will be easy for uh, for myself. But at the end, uh, it was uh, it was really tough. But one week, like in the championship, we won three games and we we survived. I re- yeah. So I remember those three games. They, three they games, were yeah. massive, massive games, and we w- we were close. Like you said. Close to the relegation zone, but we won three in a row, which basically had us surviving. And there was, I remember Scott Parker being really important in those games. What are your memories of those those three games? Because they were they were massive for us as a club. Because it felt like not only had we we were were we going to survive, but also your style of football was starting to be implemented as well. We were starting to get that style. Uh, before this uh, three uh, three weeks series, uh, we was like one week before uh, ten points from uh, relegate zone, but we lost three. It's, uh, I don't remember which team win three, and in one moment we was in one uh, one point in, uh, from relegate zone. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah. Next week we come back and uh, we find it more more uh, relaxed uh, position for uh, for ourselves. For another side, of course, was the uh, important player in the in the team, and uh, called Parker is. Uh, it was more experience uh, with uh, many many situation in this uh, in his career. He was uh, really a leader without being his best uh, best uh, level in this uh, in this time. But uh, was uh, really try uh, supporting for all the side, uh, pushing in the training, pushing in the game uh, with uh, with uh, so many so many physical. Uh, Problems. Uh, I believe I remember he has a huge problem with his uh, his uncle, but he don't lose the, 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 any training. Oh, He's working I? really hard. He will he will try be example from all the all the all the all the players, and it's uh, we find it really really amazing uh, support for uh, for uh, for uh, for Scott Sykes. Oh, he had a huge oh, problem with his that, ankle. Yeah. 
He was he was injured during that time. He was injured all the time. Uh, <laughs> he was in uh, thirty six, maybe yeah. five, yeah. six five, and he's uh, a lot of the games, a lot of the battles behind of uh, of him. Uh, where you observing uh, him in the dressing room uh, was a really ugly <laughs> situation, <laughs> but he was brave. Uh, he's he's uh, available for the for supporting the club, for supporting the staff, for supporting the teammates, and uh, pushing really hard in a really complicated moment for himself. This is every time behind the stand, behind the. Uh, the the backstage uh, nobody know what happened with him but he was really made a fantastic uh, job and maximum job what he can made in this time yeah it's really interesting you then uh, after that so you you decided so the pre-season before uh, your your full season in charge your first full season in charge you wanted to go somewhere and we're we're, qu- <laughs> we're quoting this from the the department when you told them you said you want somewhere you uh, cold and wet basically <laughs> you want the players you don't want any sunshine it needs to be cold <laughs> wet miserable. you want your players to 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 really sort of know what it is to play in those conditions is that right i know you guys went to ireland i think and and made them suffer no it uh, was a fantastic play for the for the preseason uh, <laughs> okay. it's uh, where it's uh, where it's wet and where it's cold is these uh, people is working the uh, hardest and uh, at the end was uh, successful. The previous season, we we bring uh, some new players. Uh, we try clearly change the the, 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 the the style of the of the of the of the team, and uh, step by step we start to to play uh, in the way what we what we believe is best way for uh, this group of the players. What I what I have in this uh, in this moment in my head. So this first full season made it to the playoffs and it was the semi-final against Reading. Reading, yeah. What are your memories of that? Because Reading, I remember at the time, all the stats were saying Reading should not have been where they were in the table. All the other teams around them, like Fulham, deserved to be where they were. But you, but Reading, they were hardly scoring any goals. But they were winning every game by one goal to nil <laughs> and somehow managed to sort of sneak in there. Um, and they, they produced a really kind of, um, there's no other nice way of putting it, like a real house display <laughs> and how's their way to the final what were your what was your memories of that i mean it was a dodgy penalty and then they basically parked the bus for what was the most str- frustrating second leg um i think probably in playoff uh playoff semi-final history i'm not uh, so agree with uh, with that uh, reading play very good uh, yeah, very good football this, oh, you can uh, make me look bad <laughs> 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 it's this different uh, approach of the of the of the game, and they was organized. They, they know what uh, they want to to play. The penalty was really hard for the for uh, all that for the for the players for the for the for the staff. Uh, we believe we can win this game. We believe we can play still better than uh, than Reading, but in uh, sometimes in this uh, lottery. It's not lottery, but in this uh, this situation, one uh, uh, one small mistake, of course, it's uh, it's uh, important for uh, for ourselves in this time was uh, stand up, be available for the the, the continent. And we we believe players more or less know we play in good uh, direction. Uh, at the end, we continued the next season, and next season was uh, still more successful than than this uh, previous. Yeah, let's let's move on to that. So, what were you going to say? That, well, I mean, so what a wonderful season we moved on to. I mean, that. that's the historic season when a twenty-three game unbeaten run happens in the back half of that season. And like, there's a lot of amazing things that happen in that time. Actually, Sessegnon gets his debut, doesn't he? At yeah, some I point think that's that, that season or the season before, maybe. Season but that's where he really team. established himself, Sessegnon. Yeah, yeah. So, what, what what do you think was the magic that was behind that moment in that season? Was it informed by what happened at Reading? Was it something between those those players? Like, was there a chemistry? Is was it something different than, you, than you'd experienced before? It's, it's amazing. It's always players because at the end uh, they must to perform uh, on the on the pitch. It's a lot of the work is behind the behind the uh, before where we need to to perform, but uh, everything depends on them. And where they really start to trust, uh, they can do it. They do it. 
uh, do this uh, this work. And then this season we start well, but in one moment we didn't find it our uh, best performance, and we start to lose uh, some points. Yeah. And uh, at the end, in some time before the the, the Christmas time, it's uh, it's the team asked me about uh, about uh, celebrating uh, Christmas. Uh, and the uh, original plan was uh, they asked me stay in the in the after Sunderland game, stay in the, stay there and then joining one uh, one two days. We played this uh, this game terrible and uh, and Sunderland won uh, the game after one year or something like that. That's uh, right. They like had this. they hadn't won in a year. And, that's right. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> at the end, it's. Uh, I was uh, furious after the, this uh, this uh, this game. It uh, didn't be satis- satisfied the players' uh, expect. I will suspend uh, this uh, this uh, plan what we have before the the game. But uh, I tell them, okay, lads, uh, now you are uh, you play this game, and uh, ironically, I tell them in joining your uh, celebration. Can happen something in these uh, few days there. After that, we we find it this important uh, ambassador rule uh, around in the, in the 23 games without lost any 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 game. But uh, one time more, I believe a lot of the times depends on them. And in this time, they like uh, stick all together, start to push uh, harder, step by step. Uh, we start to trust uh, in ourselves. We can win all the all the all the all the games and can be. I don't know exactly, but it can be crucial this uh, this uh, this uh, Christmas dinner for the yeah. for the team because it's uh, coincidence. After this uh, this game, we start to yeah. to compete uh, better. We start to stick all, to, all together, and we find it uh, our our best level in these two years and half. What I am coaching the the, the team. Are you, are you superstitious? Do you ever, when things are going really well, do you feel like, oh, I'm going to do exactly the same thing every day to try and keep? Do you have any superstitions? Uh, I want to say no, but in uh, in uh, sometimes uh, inside my head, it's uh, a lot of the, the things uh, happened, and I am uh, if I don't find it some uh, some uh, good result, I, I I want to change the the, the shoes or. or, <laughs> yeah. or yeah, you know, or shirt or something or or, uh, or something like this. But I I want to say no, but it's sometimes it's uh, it's uh, happened uh, this kind of the situation. I believe all the all the all the coaches and players is literally yeah. have uh, something of that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The uh, playoff semi final with Derby, that is one of the best atmospheres I've ever experienced at Craven Cottage, if not maybe the most. It was such a like release of um, pure emotion and joy that day. But it was actually a, a really tight couple of legs, wasn't it? Because we lost the first leg at Derby. Uh, Kevin McDonald hit the post uh, or, or hit the bar. Yeah. And then we were, st- and we were at half time. We were still behind in the game, weren't we? Do you, do you remember what, um, what was said at half time at, in the Craven Cottage leg of that playoff semi-final? Uh, honestly, I don't remember half time, but uh, I remember previous day it, uh, we try uh, made it some uh, some uh, some uh, kick some corner and it, uh, it uh, check it our strategy for the for the game. At the end uh, was uh, Something uh, so short, I did a bit satisfied, and in some some moment, it's seventy uh, percent of the of the of the of the of the team was leaving the 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 the, the training ground, the pitch on the training ground, and uh, I stopped few of them, and uh, and <laughs> and uh, taking the decision for the uh, for the uh, kicking uh, some some corner, but at the end, I didn't have uh, enough people. <laughs> For the for the make it was uh, Mitro was Denis Odoi can be Tim Remo one player more plus uh, plus uh, guy who is kick the 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 the, the corner yeah at the <laughs> at the end of the day kick two three times some of them uh, scored the goal can be Denis uh, or Mitro I don't remember and uh, after one minute and a half I say okay 
it uh, go inside and uh, we will see what has happened uh, tomorrow at the game. Uh, fortunately, we scored after the one uh, corner, so they scored the goal. <laughs> and I say uh, this is for the, the, the hard work, but honestly, it didn't uh, make uh, completely void day previously, <laughs> previous uh, previous day, but uh, but happened uh, second oh, goal right. scored uh, scored Denis in the in the in the second half. Half time, really, I don't remember. Uh, what uh, what happened? Uh, we were uh, acceptably good with a lot of the support for uh, for our uh, our crowd, uh, and uh, we we trust we can uh, we can uh, we uh, score this uh, this uh, this second goal. It was really really amazing day, and we come back to Wembley after thirty few years. Uh, his second time in in, uh, in full mystery was a really 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 important day for all of us. Did you feel how? Um how important that was to everyone at Fulham because it was a very emotional thing actually getting to Wembley was mm. um, because a lot of people Fulham fans had lived a whole generation without ever getting there or thinking they were ever going to see Fulham play at Wembley so you were sort of responsible for what was a huge moment in a lot of people's lives actually yeah. did you did you sense that well, of course uh, for another side I remember when you go outside the uh, when I when I observing the 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 the, the fans, I said, "Wow, I didn't know his school and have uh, this amount of the of the supporters." <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know, know, did I? If yes, I'm honest, he's, he's, he's 40,000. 40, I said, "Wow, who is yeah. uh, uh, who is this uh, who is this uh, people today?" <laughs> and then, uh, of course, it's. Uh, it's <laughs> 90 minutes and can happen uh, a lot of the different uh, different situation uh, in the in the in the game it didn't be a brilliant game for uh, for our side or for the Aston Villa side but it's uh, it's final final what a lot of the tension is a lot mm-hmm. of the responsibility it's not a easy easy day for the for the for the play but unfortunately we we win this game and uh, we made uh, Really important success for the for the for the club for the team for the for the make it uh, happy our uh, our uh, our fans was really really oh. important for all that. There hasn't been a more magical moment really in terms of release of emotion. Is there no, I mean I saw I certainly cried. There were yeah, a lot of tears around so me. So many people crying when that final whistle went. But also because it was so close and. I mean, uh, the hero of the semi-final, Dennis Adoy, uh, decided uh, to get a red card as well in in that moment because th- there was there was enough yeah there was enough time. It wasn't like you know red card with five minutes to go. It was, it was a red card with what was odd, a good twenty odd minutes left. Wow. I think maybe a little bit more, twenty five minutes, and and I I could barely watch. It it caused a lot of. Um, you know, a few heart palpitations and stuff. What was your feelings when we went down to ten with 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 that much time left and with the quality that Villa had at the time? It's in a half. I remember half time of this game. It's, I don't remember half time for derby game, but uh, half time uh, I, I I I spoke with uh, with uh, with Dennis and uh, tell him be careful. It's uh, you have a yellow card. It's uh, you must be focused and concentrate. Then it was really amazing professional. It's uh, it's a hard worker. It's a serious guy. He answered me, "Don't be worried, uh, <laughs> Gaffa. It's everything is under under control." But it happened this kind of the situation. I I look at him in the in the some strange way without uh, tell him nothing. But uh, I saw in his eyes, uh, it's not comfortable with uh, this situation and. A little bit scared what will uh, what will happen. Uh, mm-hmm. At the end, this uh, this kind of the game, you cannot have uh, everything under 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 control. And uh, I can understand uh, can happen this kind of the situation. But it was a moment uh, with lot of the lot of the tension. At the end, uh, his teammates made extra extra work, mm-hmm. and they are uh, they are fighting amazing. And uh, we didn't uh, have sensation of this uh, last. 25 minutes we play with one player uh, less they understand uh, how it's important and made the job for himself <laughs> for them so they too at the end uh, we find it one uh, I remember very well this uh, this situation but unfortunately we did it uh, we did it pay the specialist so expensive price we had that really special midfield free that you loved didn't we um, oh, yeah. McDonald's 
Johansson, Kearney. and Kearney. Unbelievable midfield. That little core of the midfield was such a special, unique thing, wasn't it? Yeah, it's true. I, I only I mentioned uh, I mentioned Dennis Odoi in this uh, in this moment, but this Tom made a fantastic job. Uh, Stefan Johansson is uh, Kev. Uh, they are enjoying in this uh, way what we try play the football with lots of the collaboration with our back with uh, without fingers who, who try play a lot of the times between uh, between lines and is uh, a lot of the time in the in the training ground a lot of the time in some games we show lots of the of the of the of the quality but another side is uh, what encourage uh, ourselves in this uh, situation they want to play this uh, this uh, game they don't have uh, any any uh, another opinion like it's better if you play in this way or another way they mm. trust yeah. uh, they they try at the end uh, this uh, this style to give us uh, success uh, this season how did you celebrate that night slav did you celebrate with the players or do you remember what you did that evening? I was few few hours in the few hours. It's probably one hour in the in the in the Wembley, and after that I go in the, in my place where I am living in some pub for the drink some uh, <laughs> some uh, some beer. I have visiting uh, for my friends for my uh, my country, and at the end is uh, we sit in some uh, some. Uh, some uh, some place and drink uh, one uh, second, another third, fourth uh, beer and uh, go <laughs> at home for the for resting. Nothing like... special, but we was uh, really tired of this. Uh, yeah. It's a long day and it's uh, some kind of the of the of the of the relax and it's uh, at the end where you have sensation you made uh, some important job uh, bring you in some uh, some level of the of the of the of the of the big calm and uh, enjoying uh, this uh, this afternoon without uh, jumping so so many up down. Yeah, it's high. I mean, that's yeah, that's probably what everybody did. Can't mm. imagine you must be. Uh, was it my? Is it was it a Champions League final that evening as well? Oh yeah, I think it was. I think yeah, it was a Champions day. League final that evening. Yeah. the one when Liverpool lost it. Do you remember? Yeah, anyway, that's that's a, that's a, that's that's a whole different. Not right. many Fulham fans would have watched uh, really, that. Really, really, I don't remember this. No. Uh, no. this <laughs> yeah. uh, I know the. I'm not watching this. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no one was. God, that was. Uh, I felt. I felt it the next day. That's for sure. I felt very rough. But um, <laughs> um, so I mean, how soon as well after those celebrations, after winning promotion, is your head into next season? Are you thinking about the Premier League? Probably next day. Immediately we start to thinking about next season. We know this is the different le- level. This is uh, still more tricky, tricky competition. And uh, did it be easy come back in the Premier League for uh, for the for the Fulham this time? If you don't mind me asking a little bit on that, uh, I, I know that um, when when we got promoted because of the style you had Fulham playing, which was such a beautiful style of football, a lot of the pundits um, and critics had us, you know, to do very well. Um, you know, to comfortably survive. I remember seeing a lot of people predicting almost a top half finish for us. In in your mind, if you don't mind talking about it, what what do you think didn't quite work for Fulham that season? I remember it's a Brighton game was really we paid the expensive price uh, where we was uh, two nil up, and after that uh, for the for the for the different uh, different reason we lost uh, two points. Uh, they scored two goals after that we have some uh, some away city game uh, and start to be really really complicated for us we start to thinking more about points than about how we play and what is best way for us for win the win the games at the end it uh, was at the end good team uh, team uh, who has option for the for the survive in the in the premier season i believe we can play Offensive football. I believe uh, we can uh, we can dominate some ca- some uh, kind of the of the team in Premier League. Of course, it's uh, it's different uh, competition, and we need to uh, some time for adapt uh, for adapt ourselves. But uh, anyway, this uh, for myself a crucial game was this uh, this uh, Brighton game where we. Yeah. I believe we we won a game against. Uh, 
which team is Bur- uh, Burnley or Burnley, uh, yeah, Burnley four one or four two. Yeah. yeah, and after four two, and after that to be we play against uh, against Brighton. This is like uh, two victories in the row in the Premier League, like any yes. uh, push us uh, forward. But okay, it didn't depend on everything. Of one game happened. Uh, the, uh, uh, in the in the in this kind of the, of the competition, something may go like this, uh, where we are dominated the situation and where we have everything under 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 control. But uh, it was short uh, experience uh, in the Premier League uh, for uh, for me. I didn't have enough opportunity for uh, for uh, uh, for testing my uh, myself in this uh, in this level. But okay, this is uh, part of our prof- profession, and we will know what will happen with the. Uh, in the in the in the in the future, it's of course is uh, is uh, dream of all the coaches is co- is coaching in this uh, in this level, and I, I am still, I believe uh, about myself. I am still a younger a young guy for the for the have the dreams, and it's one of the dreams is uh, is test myself one time more in this level. To come back to Premier League is one of your dreams to pl- to manage in the Premier League again. Oh, no, this is not my dream. This is must be dream of all the coaches. This is mm, more yeah. more more interesting uh, competition. I I don't uh, discover you something uh, something new. I I talking in my name like I can talking in name for all the coaches yeah. the coaches in the around the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When 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 you did leave, it was it was met with. Uh, real sadness amongst the Fulham fans, and that's quite a rare thing. Often, when it, you know a manager leaves a club, it, it might be you know the fans are getting restless. But with you, it was very, very different. I remember a real sadness um, because you had given, you'd bought our Fulham back. You'd created, as you know, even in the intro of this podcast, the stylish, swaggerish, uh, swaggering bunch from West London. That was you. That was your style that you had implemented. Um, how it, how does it feel to be held in such high regard by a, a fan base? You know, you, you've given a, a number of you know fans some of their greatest moments watching football, and you know, it, it, honestly, you can ask any Fulham fan, and and you're seen as one of the the great Fulham managers. How how does that feel? Uh, this club treats me really really well, and it's uh, it's uh, I try. Going outside, I remember that some of the players is called me. Is, uh, remember Mitro is is uh, is called me for say, okay, Gaffa, sorry, he's probably more uh, in this uh, in this uh, two 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 months uh, two months and a half. I said, okay, don't be worried, be focused and concentrated. We can do it, push hard and uh, go forward. And he is uh, after that say, okay, this is more worried for myself than for uh, for himself. <laughs> for another side, it's okay. We have. Longer relationship. Uh, I mean, the, uh, my staff, myself, and uh, and uh, and uh, and Fulham fan. I know they respect uh, our work. Uh, I know some of uh, some of them will be hurt because I leave the, the club. But on the other side, is uh, is uh, I accept this uh, this uh, this decision in normal way and I continue as. Living my uh, my life, of course, uh, following the result of the of the of the of the club of the of the of the of this team, uh, and uh, and uh, that's it. Uh, of course, we have. Uh, I didn't have. Uh, I didn't come back to Craven Cottage after I leave the, no, the, yeah. the the club. But uh, okay, this is. Uh, Life is uh, is long, and uh, I, uh, before after I will uh, arriving there for watching some uh, uh, some game and have the the the, the opportunity for uh, some of these people recognize me where I am close of my uh, my uh, former uh, former stadium. For the another for the another side, this uh, this uh, uh, this love is uh, between uh, between us in the in the in the some years where we are uh, try find it our intent. It's like me, like a uh, football coach. Uh, it's a club and uh, and uh, fans too. It's a bit uh, so angry for the for the, for the, for the, for finding some uh, some success. And then what I want to say is, uh, is uh, I believe uh, full and fan understand very well uh, football. It's a lot of the years. It's a lot of the 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 the, the, the fans is uh, just observing. 
what happened in the in the carbon cottage or Fulham away uh, games is focused and uh, and analyze the, the 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 situation in the in the team in the staff in the club with the club with the, with a lot of the, the the logic and this is my the sensation of my uh, of, uh, of uh, for myself or to of for Fulham fans uh, of course it's uh, sometimes we are uh, so exciting and we are so uh, satisfied or so satisfied with the independence of the different uh, different situation but i was believe uh, it was a privilege for myself uh, working in front of uh, front of the the, the Fulham fan in, in good and in bad uh, bad bomb. Oh man, that's so lovely to hear. Mm. Just to, just before we let you go, um, yeah, there's one, just one last thing we because uh, you know you, you you brought in some very good players, Mitrovic included, and we wondered, um, yeah, so what? if you could take one player that you had at Fulham, yeah, if you could take them to every club that you managed, which player would you take? But you were saying we, we're not allowed to include. We can't include Mitro. We're not allowed to include Mitro, <laughs> just in case. Not Mitro. Yeah. If it was one player that you had that played under you, who would you take? There was a lot of the a lot of the players who made a lot of the of the important thing for the for the team in my uh, my side. Is uh, just one is uh, is impossible. If I need to just one, I I take it uh, to Signor because it's Cohen the uh, more the more younger than uh, than other people. But it's, uh, it's, uh, Tom Kearney made a fantastic job. Aluko made a fantastic job yeah, for the yeah, team. Yeah. Kev, uh, Kev, uh, uh, Johansson. It's, uh, it's uh, Team Rim. It's, uh, I yeah. have, uh, it's, it's, uh, Team Rim is an uh, interesting thing, uh, story with me and with uh, team, team Rim because, uh, I was uh, furious uh, with uh, with him uh, first uh, six months. I don't want uh, him in the in the team, and uh, I call him and tell him, "Listen, team, you don't will play with me. That is better for uh, for you looking for another team." And uh, and that's it. <laughs> Guy asked me for the some extra extra vacation because he played for the. Uh, American national team. I said, "Listen to me. It's not question about uh, extra days. It's question about you don't will play with uh, with me." <laughs> At the end, is uh, is uh, he he stay. We start to working with uh, together, and day by day, he's improved. He's improved. He's improved. He didn't be uh, unsatisfied with my words. Probably he didn't be so uh, so happy, but it's, uh, he want to show me and uh, and uh, like uh, like uh, explain me you are wrong uh, and I will show you I am uh, yeah. I I am a really good good player. At the end, uh, he made this uh, this job and uh, yeah. was a really really important player for the style how we we play. And I didn't have any 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 problem for recognizing the. This uh, this my word front of the old 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 team. They say, listen, this is guy. It's uh, it's an example for all of you because I don't want him. I don't want uh, he stay here. But he deserve be keeper of the team at the end of the of, the, yeah. of our time. And he after that is uh, is made it uh, uh, feel better job where I leave the the, the team. He made it fantastic with uh, with me, but it's uh, it's, uh, it's really. Really, 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 one of the most important player in the in the in the football in this modern in the Fulham in this modern uh, modern time, and it's yeah. a positive example for uh, for me. It's, yeah. I smell something. It's not uh, can be this uh, this my words, but it's really strong. It motivated him for uh, for give some uh, different uh, answer. Uh, in this moment, I believe I have the the reason. I don't want him in the in the team. But uh, he showed me I am wrong, and he showed me he can be important for the team and his uh, respect for the, mm. for his work and uh, how he is improving in this uh, this uh, period after we start uh, working all together. Yeah. Brilliant, it's fascinating insight, isn't it? Really is, man. Yeah, and you it's you think, people. yeah, what a player he's become and and still is, like still is, you know, our first team, you know, centre back, wonderful player. 
Um, listen, we yeah, we, it's been an absolute pleasure. Like, really, really fantastic to chat to you. Yeah, and on behalf of all Fulham fans as well, Sav, I know everybody misses you. And when you come back to Craven Cottage, you'll get a, like crazy reception. People yeah. really love you here. So look forward to having you back in whatever capacity it is in the future sometime. And inside the club, everybody always talks about you and says like you had the biggest heart and was a really lovely person to work with. So um, we look forward to having you back at Craven Cottage whenever you make it. Okay, it's... Uh... Yeah, I have really good relationship with uh, with uh, with uh, lots of the people, with uh, with the people in the in the kitchen, with uh, Mark Mondes, with uh, my my Jackie, my secretary, with uh, with medical department. I am enjoying some some nights, uh, hard nights with uh, with uh, with uh, them where they are organizing some kind of the team building, and <laughs> sort of call it in different uh, in different way. At the end, it's. Uh, uh, this is nice, but I am part of the of the history of the full and full of supporters must to be focused for the supporting this coach. This uh, this team will be amazing battles immediately now in few few weeks ahead of uh, of them. And when I have the time, I will uh, came to I will uh, try uh, uh, coming to 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 Carmen Cottage for enjoying on the, some good football, uh, some good uh, good. Uh, uh, Good fight. What a place to leave Thank it. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Slavisa. Take care. There he is, the big man himself. How lovely was that? I mean, like I said, it, you know, with, with Zoom, it can sometimes be tricky, like you said. Yeah. Um, you know, to, to, to get a, a natural rapport going. Well, I had a real um, feeling of being like a right wing back at Fulham when Stav first came in and just sort of squinting and being like, so what, so am I going, what am I, uh, what... <laughs> He has, I think, what's lovely about him, and I remember from from his time at Fulham, like in his press conferences, he would talk a lot, like, you know, there would just be a lot he said, and you'd have to kind of decide, I think we all got quite good at, like, picking what we needed out of what he said. Yeah. For it to, you know, to to go, oh, that's what he means, right, great. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and that, and we've done a masterclass of that there, and it's quite nice as well because because Slav never got the opportunity to say goodbye properly. Really, he'd done such an amazing job at Fulham, mm. and lots of people no, were very it's true. sad to see him go. And we and we always felt like there was consequences beyond his control, circumstances beyond his control, really, that led to him leaving. So just to have that conversation with him and just be able to say directly on behalf of Fulham Football Club that you, you're so well loved and so missed was really nice because he actually did then come back for the yeah. Chelsea game didn't he so it's nice to have that reconnection with someone who's such an integral part of of the club's history really and, and to reminisce yeah, about, about um, Wembley and the Villa game which for any generation of Fulham fan is one of the big Fulham moments uh, for decades and decades and decades isn't it mm. and, and it's funny him talking about how he turned up and he saw the fans and thought I don't really thought I didn't know there were forty thousand Fulham fans, which I think is how everyone felt about it. But like, well, when what? we when we sold it out, I was like, you know, yeah. it sounds like a, it's not not meant in an insulting way, but it was like, sorry, we've sold out the forty thousand tickets, yeah. like, and we sold it out quick as well. And it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, fair enough. I did have a couple of friends of me who don't actually support Fulham. Oh, it was you. Okay, so that's fine. Not twenty thousand. Not twenty thousand. But I'm sure I never brought two. I. I just sort of feel like when, when those big games happen that if you're a Fulham fan and you've moved abroad or you've moved up north or anything like that, that's when you'll descend back. You know totally, what I mean? Totally, totally. And Slav was in the middle of that um, re coming together. What a man. Yeah, what a man, what a man. Hey, listen, um, I think, you know, off the back of uh, a massive three points and a, and, a, and a great result against Sheffield United. By the way, what a, go- what a team goal Bobby's was. Unbelievable. Un- Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I've never seen... Is that the best Fulham team goal? I've, I don't think I've ever seen a Fulham team goal like that. It was so fast as well. From the time it left our sort of our half, you know, towards the, you know, our defensive area, by the time it left within like, what, five, six seconds, it was back of the net and it was, yeah, it was brilliant. Um, hopefully, hopefully we might be able to uh, do that again on Monday night against... Uh, 
against Spurs, what do you reckon? Well, it's a, it's a big time to get Spurs, isn't it? They're very much the topical side at the moment. Everyone's buzzing about Spurs. Mano Solomon's, but who's left for Spurs, is injured, I think, isn't he? So he won't he's it, yeah, again. bless his heart. Yeah, he's, he's injured again. It's quite a bad one as well. So, um, so that's what I will say is uh, that Spurs have only been beaten once this whole season by uh, by one team. Who is that team? Oh, we beat them in a cup, didn't dogs. we? Yeah. We, we won on penalties, didn't we, now? Yeah, and their goal was very ambiguous. We we were down to 10 men because Tete wasn't allowed to put his boot, or needed his boot. They're scoring his a lot boot of them. Um, split. Spurs are scoring something a lot of ambiguous goals. He had to be made to go goals. back to the dressing room. Yeah, that's Bobby. Yeah, yeah. So how many goals would Spurs have scored that are non-ambiguous? If, if you had to take ambiguous goals away from Spurs, where would they be in a league? I'll ask you that. I, I think, yeah, there's probably a stat out there that's sort of placed them 14th, 15th or something. Yeah. Well, come Quite on, possibly. Fulham. In the, um, what I like to call the Sean Davis derby. Mm. And finally, um, off the back of mentioning Ivan's fresh from the end of a game at Sheffield United interview with Tim Ream, make sure you subscribe wherever you do subscribe to this because they're going to be coming more regularly. We're going to be having the long form full and fixed interviews like this one of Yukanovic and what well, in the back catalogue, what is it, Berbatov? Uh, Danny Murphy, loads of Fulham greats from all over the place and fans as well. And then there's going to be quick ones straight off the pitch um, yeah. in an instant. So subscribe wherever you subscribe, um, Fulham Fix. And don't forget to get your Fulham pets in. <laughs>